Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. This is Moina Bass Fishes. I'm Jim Moina, professional bass angler. I'm here fishing the 2024 MLF uh, Toyota Series Tournament on Toledo Bend. That's what this video is going to be about, is day one's competition, specifically my day one. Okay, I don't know what everybody else did, it's how they fished, I just know how I did and where I ended up. And I know who's got first, and I know who's, I know who's got 25th, because 25th is the cut spot, okay? It's a three-day tournament, uh, but in order to fish the third day, you got to be in the top 25 after two days. And I'm behind. I'm off the pace right now. I'm in 40th place. I've got to make up 15 positions tomorrow. Uh, looking at, <clears throat> just kind of looking at the math and how the averages are. I probably need to have like 18 pounds total tomorrow, which is a decent catch. It's been, a, <clears throat> out of seven practice days, there was only one day where I exceeded that. So it's it's looking kind of grim in that regard. Uh, so today was, um, I mean, it kind of went par for the course for based on my practice. Although, if you watched yesterday's, you, you know, if you watched my video about yesterday's practice, it was it was my best day. I caught like a nine pounder. I caught like a seven pounder, and, uh, and then some other fish. So it would have been a really good catch. Uh, but it, it was perfect big bass biting type weather yesterday with the uh, storm system moving through th uh, throughout the day <clears throat> Whereas today this is how today went uh, I woke up and it was just the wind was just howling which in my in my for weather forecast that I read um, It was the weather channels forecast they were saying like currently the winds were like seven miles an hour, but it was just ripping out of the north. I mean, the flag, the flag down at the Cypress Bend ramp here. I mean, that flag was just like this. There was no like, like moments of limpness. It was just steady, like this. That's more than seven miles an hour, I promise you. And with Toledo Bend, north wind like that, that's crazy. So I launched my boat. I got up early. As soon as I woke up, I drove it. Down, you know, staying here at the park, right where the long, take where right where the weigh-in is and take off and all that. So I set my alarm. As soon as it goes off, I throw some clothes on, hop in my truck, launch my boat. I see the flag doing this. I in in the boat basin here. It's like, even though it's a north wind, the way the just the the massive force of these waves is like pushing themselves pushing themselves into this boat basin, which is, uh, which faces west, it doesn't even face north, but so this, this basin's got like surges of water coming in and out of it and wave action. And so as I launch, my plan is I'm going to launch the boat and then go back up to the camper, eat and just relax for an hour and a half. And that's what I do. So, and I'm aware of, so I beach my boat on the sand. And, and I'm aware of what can happen with this wave action that it can actually lift your boat off the sand and uh, drift your boat out. So I beached it extra hard, extra heavy. And then, of course, with the power poles, you drop those down. And that's, I mean, the way I beached it, I'm like, okay, that's good. So I get back to the camper and eat and relax. And then I get a call from the tournament director or a text message saying my boat's drifted offshore. <laughs> so, so I'm like, okay, I'll be there in five minutes. Get down there and not nothing's damaged or anything. Uh, there's a couple other, a couple of fellow uh, competitors are just holding the boat. <clears throat> so, uh, so I jump in, but that's how that, mo that's how the morning started. And, uh, and, and then the whole decision, I was just, um, this, this wind really was caught me by surprise and, uh, my neighbor who's staying next to me caught him by surprise. His weather amp, apps weren't calling for this kind of wind. And so what they ended up doing with the tournament director here, uh, he actually delayed takeoff because the winds were supposed to subside later in the day. And uh, But it was just ripping. So they, he, he delayed takeoff one hour. And that extra hour did give the wind a chance to 
lose a little bit of its uh, veracity, but um, it was still blowing. And we went out at 8 o'clock instead of 7. We, we, we did go out at 8 anyways. And when you get, when you get out there, <laughs> so I, I turned and went north out of here. And when I got around this point out here, man, it was uh, like major seas out there. In fact, some guys, some guys made the turn and they just turned right around and came back, <laughs> came back here. Or just fish, lo you know, right locally within, in close range of here. Um, but I, I got out there and I, uh, um, I made it to where I wanted to fish, which wasn't, it wasn't a big, it wasn't that far, which that's the only reason why I would have done it. I mean, if I had a place far away, no, I wouldn't have done it. I would have turned around like those other guys, but cause it wasn't that far. I got to where, um, I wanted to be. And, and my strategy was, uh, okay, we had one hour delay. Uh, we had this front come through. It's super windy right now. Um, my big fish were deep fish. My numbers fish were shallow fish, but they were smaller fish. So I opted for the smaller fish because I just wanted to get something. And with the wind laying down later in the day, the plan was to get my five and then go out deeper when the wind lay down and fish more uh, open main lake kind of stuff. And so that was the plan, and it, it it was really it was really hard to get my fish up shallow. They the bites were not coming easy, and it was tough. And eventually, uh, I don't know, late in the, I mean, it was probably like one thirty. I had a, we had a check in time at three thirty, and now it's like one thirty, or maybe even a little later. Probably one thirty, and I, I only got four fish, four two pound fish. So, but I'm like, I, this isn't working. I can't keep doing this. I, I haven't caught one for like two hours. So I'm like, we're just going to go out and fish, the, fish my big fish water and just see what happens. So go to my first spot. And I mean, it doesn't look too promising, but um, I, spot, I spot a tall stump on the uh, active target. I don't see any fish by it, but it could be hiding, uh, tucked to the bottom or whatever. So I throw a Carolina rig over there and I catch number five. It was a spotted bass. So now I got my limit of five. So now I'm feeling pretty good. Like, okay, now, you know, we can just hit the few deep spots that I have and, you know, in the remaining amount of time. And uh, hopefully we can, you know, maybe I'll get lucky and catch a big one. But, so, but anyways, we fish that spot for a while, go to another spot, fish there for a while. No more bites. Then, then I go to where I caught the nine pounder yesterday. Nothing there. Then I go to this other spot where uh, one of my early practice days. It was a brush pile. Um, I thought, well, maybe they'll be set up in that thing because they were then. But nothing was there. Um, <laughs> so fine. So then I'm like, okay. Then now we're really running out of time. I mean, we're like three o'clock or later now it's later than three o'clock so i'm like okay well i'll just hit another brush pile that i know of where i, I actually saw two fish in this brush pile in practice and i thought they were decent sized fish and i go to there and I, and what do you know i catch one on a swim bait it's actually a two and a half pound spotted bass which is it's not i mean for a texas spotted bass that's really big for whatever reason the genetics of these spotted bass in texas uh, these spotted bass tend to run kind of small, not like what you see east of here. But so anyway, so now, so I actually got to call a fish. It was probably like, I don't know, three quarter pound upgrade. I mean, maybe even a full pound at best, but still that's, I mean, I was all for it. And not only that, I knew there, there was another fish in that same brush pile and I got him to follow out my bait and he didn't hit it. Um, <clears throat> And that was it. Uh, I fished those two brush piles until about with the ten minutes to go, and then I just wandered. Then I just wandered around and hoping to stumble into something for the last ten minutes, and didn't. So I ended up weighing eleven pounds five ounces, fortieth place. 
and the wind and the wind had died down just beautifully by the end of the day. I mean, you could get around, fish wherever you wanted. Um, you could get around, go you know, go relatively fast. But uh, you know, just um, yeah, I just didn't get any of the big bites, and I, I knew. I knew committing shallow that that wasn't going and probably wasn't going to happen because I hadn't seen any big bite shallow period. So, but it just took too dang long to catch those four fish too long. So now tomorrow, looking at tomorrow, uh, just doing the calculations, I probably need like an 18 pound catch tomorrow and there ain't no way that's going to happen up shallow. So, the thing to do might be to just fish a bunch of new water tomorrow out deep and just hope to get lucky because I mean all my every quality fish I caught this week was out deep I didn't catch many I caught two yesterday and I catch about one a day the rest of the time but if I could get two quality fish that'd be like 10 pounds right there or maybe even more who knows and, uh, and then if you just somehow scrap together a few other fish, well, then you're close to 18 pounds. So, but then again, I just feel like the shallow fish, I mean, I could, there's other areas where I, where I could go that shallow and those fish might be easier to catch, you know, pick up a quick limit of those two pounders and then go deep, but it sure didn't work today. It took way too long to get those two pounders and, uh, um, but it's like it was so windy at the beginning of the day and the waves were just massive. I mean, you, I, you can only go like 13 miles an hour just driving, driving with your boat with the nose like this. So you're not slapping the, and spearing waves. <clears throat> um, that's, all, that's how you had to get around this morning. And once you got into an area where you wanted to be, there was no going anywhere else for quite a while. I'd say it wasn't it wasn't until about eleven o'clock where guys were starting to run around out in the main lake again. Maybe maybe a little, maybe ten at the earliest, but it was blowing. So, but yeah, it was an interesting day. It was a challenging day. Um, I survived it. Fortieth place, but gotta move up from here I can't, I can't move down I need these I need more points than just 40th place points I need I need to move up in a big way so and I'm not sure what I'm gonna do I'm gonna have to sleep on it am I gonna mess with shallow fish tomorrow and, and get the two pounders or am I gonna just pass on that and just risk it and see what I can catch in deeper water which would be a big risk because I'd be having to fish a lot of new water tomorrow and just gambling. Big gam big gamble. But big gamble with a big payoff if it works. So got a choice to make, decisions to make. They'll be made in the morning. And why in the morning? Because I'll, I'll know exactly what the weather conditions are in the morning. I'll know exactly what I'm dealing with for cloud cover and just wind and all that. So... That's why I can't sit here and say, hey, I'm going to go to this spot, then that spot, then that spot. No. I'm going to wake up in the morning, assess the situation, kind of get the gut feeling going, and go with that. Well, that's all I, that's all I got to say about day one. Um, oh, but those shallow fish, by the way, are uh, uh, Nico rig fish. Um, and they're pretty much, I'm pretty sure there's fish, you know, males, male bass that are on their spawning beds. I can't see them. The water's too dark where I'm fishing, but judging by the way they're set up and positioned, that's that's my guess is what they are and the way they're biting. And and one, and in fact, one that I weighed today uh, was the first one I put in the boat, in fact. Um, I hooked him. He jumped off, and I came back like a half hour later and caught him right in the exact same, same little tiny spot. So that right there tells you that's fishes that fish was on, on a bed all right that's enough of this video thanks for watching and we will uh hopefully have a big catch tomorrow over